So I want to discuss the FAST2 segmentation algorithm. And the FAST2 segmentation algorithm is a hidden Markov model, except uh, unlike the hidden Markov model I described previously, where your states were defined as zero copies and one copy, etc., we define states as normal, one copy gain, high copy gain, loss, and big loss. And the user, through the use of these cutoffs, can establish the, the range of values that fit into that state. So if the probe's values, so, so what the user does says, OK, if the probe fall within the first red line and the first green line, this is what I tolerate to be my normal area. So if you have a noisier step and you want to expand this thing out, you could do that and say, OK, all of this stuff is normal. And then you also define where the gain uh, state would be, when the loss, where the loss state would be between these two red lines, where the homozygous states are, and the amplification. So that's where the term adaptive comes from. So the states are adaptive. And I'll show you that in the live presentation. So, so if you if it sees a probe at this position, there is a probability that it is normal. It's not a high probability, but there's some probability that this probe is part should be part of a normal state. Um, it's actually a higher probability that it's in a gain state, and it has a very low probability it's in, it's in a high copy gain, a very low loss, and impossible for it to be in a homozygous. So as the HMM model builds up the probability for what it should be at that position, it uses these. I'm showing a Gaussian. It's not really necessarily a simple Gaussian. It's a mixture model, but uh, hopefully get the point across. Now, if I adjust these thresholds farther up, so I put the, the probe ends up being right at the border of what I've defined to be the minimum for one copy gain, it gets the same amount of support for it to be in a normal state as well as a, in a gain state. So it has to rely on its neighbors as it looks to see should it be a one copy gain or should it be a normal? And it has an interesting um, artifact, which I will sh demonstrate live. So the, the point is the user defines the, the tolerance and essentially the state of the HMM model, where you want to define so if it's a mosaic or a cancer case, you, how low do you want to go? If your array performs really well and you can push these things down to close to zero, and say anything above or below the zero line is some altered state, uh, you could do that. So here's the rest of that. So the fact two um, parameters, is, again, you have the significance threshold, which says how much confidence you need to have before switching states, essentially. And then these gain and loss cutoffs become very important because they define the, the boundaries of the, the HMM state. So now I'm going to show you this in action. So let's go back and uh, delete these guys. And uh, let me just duplicate that. And under settings, I'm going to change from the rank segmentation to fast two segmentation, five to the minus six, and the same cutout. So let me not look at that and just process this guy. So if you look at that, and since you look at chromosome 21 of the uh, 12, of, sorry, of this sample before, let's focus back on that guy. One thing that's interesting to note is on the PR. So if you note on the PR here, if you recall before, this was divided into multiple segments because of this kind of a wave behavior. But with the fact, we told it that the normal state is between this red and blue line. So since the probes all pretty much stay inside there, this all one state. This is all normal state, even though there's a slight shift down from here. So it doesn't chop this thing up into smaller states. So that, that all ends up being there. Now if you go farther to the right, um, here it decides that these probes 
are having more probability that they're in this lost state because they're put more between these two red lines than between the red line and the blue line. Uh, these probes to the left here are actually um, more on the normal state. So, <coughs> sorry. So now I'm going to change. Um, I'm going to go back into the data set to get rid of this old one. So what I want to do, <laughs> copy, of copy, of copy. Um, I want to duplicate this guy and change the settings instead of minus. So I'm not going to change the significance, but if we change this from minus 2.3 to minus 1.8, or let's say 1.5. And just process that and go back to that chromosome 12. You see, to me, it's actually cool because you can see it just pretty much says, ah, now all these probes are more likely to belong to the one copy lost state. So essentially, it just makes one state here and that becomes a lost state. So you got normal, this guy, these guys are all normal. There is uh, it finds this set of probes here. They're all in this positive area. So it makes that a gain. Now, um, that might be a good thing to show. So if you click here, the significance level that, that we have is 5 e to the minus 6. Now, if I want to get rid of this, if I change that from 5 e to the minus 6 to something more stringent, um, it might not have enough confidence that this is really a different state than that. So to, to see that, let's go ahead and duplicate and change the settings from 5 to the minus 6 to 5 to the minus 8, let's say. And since I haven't done this before, I don't know if it's going to remove that or not. But, um, Go to chromosome 12. Yeah, so that one still was um, confident, but something over here just disappeared. So if you look at the the probe, this this group met the significance. This one didn't. So we went to a more stringent cutoff. So that's what the, the stringency cutoff will do. So if I change this to even farther from either minus 9 to 10 or 11, at some point, this will go away. Um, yes, what I wanted to actually show you was there is chromosome 10. So if I pick one of these samples, like this one, and if you look at the whole genome plot, you know, this, this sample is interesting to me because it's cancer and it has multiple levels of mosaicism. So at one point it's 0.7, the losses, and then it's at minus 0.4 or 0.3 here. Um, in fact, if I zoom in around that, it's around minus 0.32. So what I want to do is go back in here and I will reset Actually, I'm going to delete that one then. and reset this one and change the settings to the same thing we had before, 5 is to minus 6. But this time, the loss, I'm going to change to minus 3.2. And this is what I call the schizophrenic state is because you see lots of segmentation. And I created this just to point out the effect. So if you remember in the example I showed you where the cutoff line is right around where the probes are, it doesn't know is it supposed to be a lost state or a gain uh, or a normal state. So it just vacillates between the two. Um, so if you see something like that, the, the best way to remedy that, of course, is to adjust your threshold. Make the decision. Do you want to pick things up that are this level mosaic or not? Um, most people would say yes. So then you will change the settings from 
minus 0.32 to say back to what we had before, minus 0.15. And then if I reset and reprocess that sample and go back to chromosome 10, you see it's nice and it made a decision that is absolutely um, all nice in the, in the red state. Now, I showed before, I could go back into that schizophrenic state and make it minus 0.32, and then make it harder for it to switch state. So we can make it, you know, 1 is the minus 10. And if I reset this sample, and reprocess it with those values, uh, if you look at it, it doesn't change state as much. They're bigger, um, but they're still right around the border. So we merged most of the state into CUR, but right at the border. So you have to decide where do you want to really set, establish your cutoff. And one way to do that is if your platform is not very noisy or if your noise is very limited, you can move your threshold all the way down to about here. Um, this sample has, for example, this mosaic loss on 18 that's very low. Um, so you could bring everything down to be able to catch that without too much um, hesitation.